I am delighted to invite uh, Dr. Ram Sevak Sharma, who many of you know as one of the architects of Aadhaar. Uh, and in his last job, he was uh, uh, heading the TRAI. In fact, I think he just uh, retired just uh, just a week ago. So, is that right, Dr. Sharma? Yes. It uh, is. Yeah. But uh, we, before we started talking, we were uh, this, uh, this chatting about it, and it looks like I must have met Dr. Sharma some 40 years ago at IIT Kanpur, where I was there as an undergraduate student, and uh, he was uh, uh, getting his uh, master's in mathematics. Uh, he left in 1978. There is some possibility that you ran me in IIT Kanpur, but maybe not. Maybe well, not. Well, uh, I, I know one, one Chaudhary, you know, uh, uh, who, one was Shamal Chaudhary and another is another Chaudhary. So I knew a number of Chaudhary, but I don't specifically I, remember and recollect you now. No, no, because I was uh, three years behind you. Um, so it's good to come back uh, and meet again after 47 years. And I have followed uh, uh, your work over the years. And I must say, you are the one person who had faith that technology will solve many of India's problems. And it is not just faith, you actually put yourself to it. And that's what we want to talk about today. And um, your book is just out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I am reading the Kindle version uh, right now. Um, I want to read uh, one sentence from an um, introduction that Nandan Nilekhani wrote about you. It says, Ram Sevak Sharma, the personification of all attributes that were essential for a mission to succeed. A career Mandarin with healthy disregard for convention, a versatile administrator, in an obsessive relationship with code, a tough taskmaster with a profound empathy for the human condition. I think we can close our interview with that. That's a beautiful sentence that encompasses many of the things that you are. Um, so let us talk about um, Adha. Let's talk about uh, your time at Adha. Um, what does uh, Nandan mean by healthy disregard for convention? What is he talking about? Well, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Chaudhary, for having me with you. And it's indeed a privilege and pleasure to talk to you and talk to your um, students and other participants in the webinar uh, on this issue. And the International School of Business has actually acquired such stature over the last few years that it's, it's a matter of pride for anybody to be kind of associated with ISB. So with, I must thank you very much for, for agreeing to kind of uh, do this, this conversation. It is our pleasure uh, and on. Thank you so much. And uh, on to the specific question uh, of, of uh, you know, you, you said, what is Aadhaar? Did you say that or, or you are asking some other question? Yeah, no, Aadhaar, we, we sort of know. I was uh, talking about Nandan's description of you and he described okay. you in two or three different ways. One of the things he says is uh, that uh, you were a career Mandarin with a healthy disregard for convention. Yes, I think Nandan is, first of all, very kind to use these these words, the number of them, attributes, some of them may, I may not possess. But I think one of the things which he is right about is actually uh, I have a very healthy disregard for, for bureaucratic conventions because I have now been in bureaucracy for about 42 and a half years. I joined yeah. at the age of 22 and, and now I am 65. So, you know, 43 years yeah. approximately. Uh, the the things which I have seen in bureaucracy, of course, there are wonderful bureaucrats and there are useless bureaucrats. You know, you have, like in every profession, you have different type of, you know, people, all kinds of people. But one of the things which somehow, uh, you know, I uh, have had uh, aversion to 
is the kind of status quo, you know, kind of spending your time and you know, biding your time, saying that my, I am into this job, let me finish three years or two years and I'll get out of it. So essentially, yeah. my idea is, look, we have we have come into this job with certain ideological, you know, sort of convictions, and and then I think we should, we will be doing injustice to our profession if we do not, uh, you know, fulfill our mandate given to us. And typically, our mandates are pretty progressive, and 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 you know, they, they should you know, we are supposed to transform many things, and and therefore, I am a little uh, sort of away from that, and and I I believe that. We as bureaucrats must deliver on the promise which we have made to the people and, and to the constitution of this country. So that's why I have a healthy disregard for that. Secondly, yeah. I remember an anecdote, you know, when Nandan uh, joined uh, the, the, uh, as the chairperson and I was a, a typical bureaucrat, Nandan also had some views about bureaucracy. So mm -hmm. he was generally saying, you know, you guys write too much on file and you guys do this and take too much of time. Generally, that is the attitude that bureaucracy is slow, you know, status quoist and, and doesn't really believe in, in marketing. Yeah, right? everything what, I would say, yeah. in fact, yeah. Yeah, you're right. And, and, and you would be right in saying that. I'm not denying that fact. But what happened was that, uh, uh, you know, uh, he, he asked me once, Ram said, well, why do you have to write so many things on file? And you know, why do you have to full pages and pages, then you take a decision, then you are taking this decision. And I, I uh, humbly told him that, look, Nandan, what is going to happen is, this is neither my father's money nor your money. Yeah. This is yeah. the money of the taxpayers of this country, the public of this country. And by our you know, philosophy, we must spend the money like we spend our own money. And therefore, it is important for us to justify a decision as to how we took the decision. After five years, neither you will be there nor I will be there. Somebody else will be there and that somebody else also need to know, maybe CAG is there, maybe CBI is there, maybe CA, CBO is there, Chief Vigilance Officers, you know, you know these three acronyms. Yeah, right? yeah, yes. So they will be there and they will examine this question. And you know, we should, we should now, they should not say, oh, we don't know why they took that decision. They suddenly, you know, it appears that on file, suddenly Nandan came with a brain wave saying that I have to give contact to this person. And so he gave the contract. So we have to justify this, not only for ourselves, but also for posterity. And yeah. that, is, that is why we do it. And I gave it a very, uh, you know, trivial kind of name. I said, Nandan, ye, this is, ye file ka pet bharna hai. File <laughs> so then, you know, he says, Aja, theek hai, bhai. it's okay. Then what happened was then, uh, then we started moving and we started moving. We started moving at an extremely fast pace because we were all possessed that, you know, we need to do this project. And yeah. then Nandan became a little uncomfortable that the speed is too fast for, for even a private sector. So he, oh. would, yeah. So he would ask me, Ram said, file ka pet bhar gaya na? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. That's, he says, that's funny. You bring things too fast, and you know, ye kya ho raha hai? Ye file ka pet bhara hua hai na? Abey aisa na ho, hamlo pakde jaaye kala. Hamne kya nahi? Aap chinta mat kijiye. File ka pet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So somehow, I think after working for five years uh, in the government in this project, Nandan also, I am sure, must have changed his views of the bureaucracy. Of course. Which it seems. I mean, if you if you read his uh, introduction, it's a wonderful introduction, and I recommend everyone to read this book. I think it's a uh, lot of people say that yes, in newspaper, but this is a personal account. This is a story of uh, uh, Dr. Sharma's personal account, and I think it is. Uh, I always learn from people's personal story. It's kind of like reading. Uh, uh, reading biographies of uh, leaders, you know, you learn about what motivated them and what got them to do what they did. So let me let me say a few things about this Aadhaar by any means in 2020, anybody who looks at it, whether they like it or not like it, they have to agree that this was a huge project. It was a big undertaking. In fact, I remember talking to a reporter from Reuters in the United States and I said, you know, India is embarking on this journey to give ID to every citizen. He laughed at me. He said, this is never going to happen. These things start, there are cost overruns, 
and very soon you know that this will be over. And Nandan mentions that there was something special sauce in this about the public-private partnership. He says, and I think you say in your book too, that it wasn't just one thing. You needed both sides of the story to come together for this to work. Tell us a little bit more. Tell us a little bit why the public sector angle that you talked about and why the private sector angle where you brought people, technical people, literally, both could not have done without each other. You are absolutely right, uh, Professor Chaudhary. What had happened is it is to London's uh, foresightedness that, you know, in the beginning he came and, you know, we decided, he told me, Ram Seva, we need to have a very, very eclectic team, as he called it. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, what do you mean by that? He said, look, in the government, it is not, there are multiple services, you know, you have IAS, you have police, you have customs, you have income tax, you have railways, all kinds of, you know, services. Uh, the, so that's one part. So you have many, many departmental kind of services. So therefore, what is required is we should not have only the IAS officers, we should have different type of services because they will bring, you know, with them different and varied experience. Aadhaar is not an artifact which is being made for a particular department. We are making this identity for everybody, for all departments, for the people. And therefore, we need to have that experience. And secondly, we also need to have the expertise and experience of the people working in the private sector in the domain of information and communication technology. And, and only then, you know, we, we can marry the scalability and the scale of the government and the agility of the private sector. Because mm -hmm. I think that's very important that, you know, one is one has a, this thing, they, they, both these qualities must contribute to each other. So that is how we came up with this idea that we should have the best minds from the private sector and the most willing minds from the public sector. So mm -hmm. largely all these people who joined Aadhaar, they in the, the the actually the normal thing is that somebody will just put up a proposal from the department of personal and training and you know they will get posted in this particular case we used to receive emails or nandan used to receive or i used to receive emails saying that i want to join this project and we will say uh -huh. here is a guy who is interested in this project and he we said let's take him on deputation because we did not create our own course let us take this guy on deputation from you know because he's willing so we actually ended up getting willing people both from the public sector and private sector. And I tell you, I have never in my 40 years or 42 years of, of life experienced such a team which is possessed. Believe me, everybody was so much a part of it. He, whatever be his position, whatever be his, this thing. And we actually created a very, very democratic structure in the sense that in the government is complete hierarchy. The private yeah. sector is complete democracy. And we said, let's have the, let's have a hybrid of the thing. You know, we should have, we, we can't so, have. So, so, I want to, so I want to ask you about that. I mean, this is what happens. Whenever we look at things in the past, uh, we kind of remember it with fondness, you know, but there must have been pain. I mean, how did, how did these people from private sector and public sector get along? I cannot imagine. Uh, was there a lot of blood? No, no, you are very right. In fact, this is one of the very serious problems we had to deal with. So, for example, all the private sector guys, they have the culture in them, their organizations, where they call everybody on the first name basis. <laughs> yes. For yes. any system, even if a guy is one day senior to me, I will have to call him sir. <laughs> you know, so this is the this is a cultural kind of thing. And please understand, I am yeah. not a guy who will say what is better and what is not because yeah, you know, uh, yeah. different. You know, the, the, these are just organizational cultural issues. How you deal with these are conventions. Yeah. So that is something which should happen. Now, what happened was that when the, uh, the private sector guys came, they started you know calling somebody Ganga, somebody Ram Sevak, somebody Ashok, etc. And, and uh, you know, we people feel very comfortable, not because they were uh, com un uh, uncomfortable in hearing their name, but the fact that two level junior fellows sitting in the, their room and some guy from outside comes and he start calling on the first name. There was a bit of a, you know, cultural kind of a, a problem. 
So uh, yes. struck a deal. I, I may even have done that. I think I, I came to your office in 2011 yeah. and I remember meeting Ashok. I probably called him Ashok, and, but, I'm, but he didn't mind. He, we were good friends afterwards. No, uh, no, and even yeah. Nandan, I mean, Nandan was, you know, very generous. So, yeah. so for example, uh, I would, uh, uh, you know, address Nandan as Nandan in all my communications and everybody. But, you know, I would, I would say, Lake, look, let us marry these two things and let us, you know, maintain this, this relationship. So one is that, you know, uh, this sub business or, you know, the kind of addressing and respect and other kinds of things. That's one part. Second. So, was, so, so, so what did you do? No, I want to know. What did you do then? What did you tell your folks that we, we should go on first name basis? Or? We, we, we said do whatever your other person feels comfortable with. Both of you should feel comfortable with. I see. Okay. There are okay. many persons who have become very, very personal friends and they call them first name basis, private, public. But but there are very pe people who you know you will call them sir, ma'am, and all that kind of thing. So that's I see, I see. but that's so you left it to people. people. Yeah, yeah. We we said look, look, this is up to you, but please don't offend the sensibilities. And and let's also understand that this is a project which is a government project. You see, what, what the another problem which happened was that because me and Nandan were going like salespersons, you know, selling the concept of Aadhaar, what is Aadhaar? So so the guys will come back to us and say. Uh, look, Aadhaar has already, this kind of identity has already been done before. We didn't say Aadhaar at that time because there was no name for it, but it was yeah, yeah, yeah. identity. They said, look, it has already been done. Secondly, they will say like the American uh, the writer's uh, person, or Reuters person whom you talk to, it yeah. cannot be done. It's impossible to do. So yeah. A, it has already been done. It cannot be done. And <laughs> thirdly, it is not worth doing. It's not uh, worth doing. It's not worth doing. So what is what is the benefit of this going to be? And the last one was you don't have authority to do it. Oh, I see. Four, four, you know, kind of things which people throw back at you. So essentially, we were like salesperson and, and government guys generally, those of those of us who think that they're very upright, they generally don't like salespersons. So, so we were not liked by, by anybody. You were not liked by, okay. So these guys are new guys and you know, they basically acquired a sense that this is a project led by Nandan and therefore it's a, it's a private project. Oh, okay. Now we had to tell, look, this is not a private project. This is a, a Sarkari project. Only thing is private people are working on it. Yeah. With side by side. So don't confuse this issue. It is as much subjected to rules and regulations of the government. We are not going to spend even a farthing without the proper approvals. So that's one part. And the private sector people also had to be told that, look, accountability lies with the guys who are working in the system, that is the government people. So please refrain from, you know, kind of making such decisions at your level, you know, which can be questioned tomorrow saying that this person did not. Have so you wanted to create, you wanted to create a record transparency so that, uh, as you said, if uh, somebody else comes in, they can uh, uh, start the job running rather than. Uh, so basically yeah. we said everybody is welcome for creative, you know, inputs and all that. This is, there is democracy as far as ideas are concerned. But there is hierarchy when it comes to decision making. I see. Okay. So this, is the, this is the balance which we kind of uh, established. So, so let me, let me, I must, I must, I must confess this. And in fact, Nandan in one of the emails uh, uh, told me so because one of the problems which happened was that these guys, the private sector people, the way they, they are structured, I mean, the, the way they work, when they get an idea, they will share that idea with people. They will share an idea in the audience. Now, they might have got an idea from a Sarkari fellow. So they will articulate it and they are better at articulating. Our people were not very good at articulating. So these fellows will come and complain to me saying that, sir, we, we had this idea, idea. Right? this guy has plagiarized our idea and, you know, he's, so there were such kind of, you know, issues, but I must tell you that when you continued together, you know, you developed uh, an understanding and empathy for each other. Chemistry, have a, develop a chemistry. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So, so let me, let me go and talk about a fundamental issue that has come up and been discussed, but I want to uh, come back to it. Um, very originally, the idea of Aadhaar was that this is going to be an authentication service. And that's all it was going to be. That I want to go anywhere and say, I want to prove to you that I am Bhagwan Chaudhary. Right. 
And that's all. Aadhaar will go back and check with my fingerprints and my iris and say, yes, this person is who cl he claims to be. That's what's supposed to be. And in fact, I think Nandan was saying originally Aadhaar should only be a number. And there was this thing about number and a card. And I think in your book, you write something about uh, that you told Nandan that number is like the soul of Aadhaar and card is like the body of Aadhaar. So tell us how this evolved from a number into a card. And I have a couple more follow-up questions on that. No, I think that's an extremely important question. Uh, what is happening is uh, that a card in a way is a physical token of something which is written on it, right? A driving license has your photograph, has your other things, and, and you know, it's, it's there as a card. Many times these cards are also called smart cards. Your card were a smart card. So smart yeah. cards will also have a lot of intelligence into it, a lot of security features into it. So that was the way uh, things were in the in the in the earlier physical world. And in on in an unconnected world. Let me give you an example that you know when you used to go and travel on an aeroplane you used to have a ticket with a jacket, right? Yeah, yeah. There yeah. was a perforated portion, you know, some kind of transparent type of portion, which the lady will just, you know, lady at the counter will just take it out. That is coupon, it was called. Yeah, and right. Coupon will, will be the proof that you, you perform the journey. Slowly what has happened, as the world got more and more connected, the, the actually importance of these tokens reduced. So much so that today you don't even carry your ticket to the airport. You just have your PNR number and you check it, or you just get print your ticket on any paper and you know that shows yeah, yeah, yeah. you can put in the mobile. So slowly and slowly the the value of these tokens has reduced considerably. Now, what we were conceiving was that if there is an identity. Now, if that identity is connectable to me anytime, anywhere, then there is no need for me to have a very strong security loaded token. Okay. That's one part. Second issue in that token is that if you have a smart token, then you need to have a smart reader for reading that token. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Third is that if you have a token, then you are going to have the fingerprints and the iris images in that token which means they may be protected, uh, you know, cryptogra cryptographically, but nevertheless, they are distributed. So if some hacker takes it from some token, then you, it will be very difficult to figure out as to who took it from where. Yeah, yeah. You know, so actually putting a lot of stuff in the token is a bad idea. So we came up with this issue that look, where you have just a number, then you can connect and you can authenticate yourself with just that number. You don't need a card. You don't need a token. Yeah. However, there was another counter argument, which was that if you have a car, if you have only a number, then you know the poor person who is going, you know, and he doesn't have anything. Then, then what will happen? Then if you say that he will go to any printer and computer and get it printed, it's actually too much to expect. Okay. We said that you should also have uh, some kind of you know durable durable artifact okay. which should okay. be I keep numbers. So I was proposing a plastic card. Okay. Now the Ministry of Finance said, friend, you said it's a number and not a card. So now you don't talk about card at all. While we were saying, then I said it is not a card, we were saying it's not a smart card. A smart yeah. card costs hundred rupees, a plastic card costs five rupees. Right. So basically, I was saying that if that is how where I came up with the analogy saying that number is the soul, which resides, which is indestructible, you know, Ajar Amar hai. Yeah, and, right. and actually, we also have this thing that once the number is allotted to you, it's allotted to you for all times to come. Because right. we have a number line, 12 digit number, which can accommodate 100 billion numbers. Right, right. I know. Two billion. So therefore, it is. It so is you no accounted for all the rebirths and things like that, also, yeah. I mean, what I'm saying is that 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 rebirth is not the issue. Issue is that it's a it's a number and it's also a random number. 
Yeah, right. Yeah. So that makes it very interesting because normally people will say, okay, if you are from UP, your number should become, become 0, 01. If you are from MP, 0, 02, and all that. Which is what the social security number is right. in the US. And it is very insecure. It's very insecure. Absolutely. So social security number, you can actually, uh, you know, uh, you can figure out as to who's you can guess. You can guess very fast. Yeah. You can guess really fast. Here you cannot guess because the density of the numbers 1.2 billion on a 100 billion long number line is just 1.2 percent. So yeah. the chances that a given number is a random Aadhaar number is only 1.2 percent, and then yeah. you know, so it becomes difficult. So basically, we came up with a random number, and there is an interesting book, which is interesting paper, white paper, written by one of the professors of MIT, uh, Dr. Sanjay Sharma. This uh, gentleman basically had had come up with the number in his scheme as to how it should be structured and why it should be structured this way. So it's a, it's an independent study in itself. So that's yeah. why it came. But essentially, coming back to the point, Professor, of your point about the, you know, I said number is a soul, and this this thing is a body. Now you need to have some body at least to contain that soul. You can't, you know, soul soul if without a body becomes a booth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but, but you know, the, 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 you're, you're absolutely right. But um, I have noticed that Aadhaar, even though it is not a secure card, it's not a smart card, and nobody can say that it cannot be duplicated, people are using it like it's an ID. I mean, what the heck is, I go to the airport and I show them and they let me in and I'm saying, why are you letting me in? There's nothing, nothing secure about this. So, that's one thing. So it has become something different from what you originally. The second is, Aadhaar is also associated with address proof and uh, your husband's name. And when did that come in? I mean, that seems like it was something that wasn't there in the original conception. Yeah, again, again, you are absolutely right. What has happened is that, you know, people just accept that paper, whichever is printed, you know, it's just printed on a paper or it can even be on a mobile number and all that. People just accept it on face value. Now, there is a difference if somebody presents a driving license or, or some, you know, other smart card uh, and, you know, which has a lot of uh, holograms and other security features, somebody accepts it, right? And against that, you accept just a piece of paper, which can be printed by any computer, by anybody, change anything, right? Yeah, right, right. The difference is that while you cannot verify the veracity of the, uh, the driving license real time online, you can verify the veracity of this number immediately online. Granted, granted, I know. But I'm saying in practice, it is not done. On the airport, nobody's it's checking. Not, it's, it's not done, but you see the point is that if you have in, in your mind, that it can be done at a split second, then you know you will rather refrain from you know doing the photoshopping of that document. If you have, if you want to do forgery, you will do a better forgery by forging a driving license where you cannot really find whether it is genuine or not. I mean, you yeah. have holograms, etc. People will believe, yeah, this is all right. So basically, what is happening is because it's an online artifact. For example, you go to the airport. Now you show a ticket, right? And that ticket can be as much forged, right? Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. You can just anybody can print any ticket, any PNR number, and the guy on the uh, CISF guy does not check your thing. Again, any terrorist could go in, right? Yeah. But, but because this is known, if the guy wants to find out what is is it a real ticket or not, he will be able to figure out. Yeah. So what is happening is that the the immediate very very ver ver verification mechanism of a document makes that document to that extent acceptable and also a person is afraid of forging it. That's the broad thing which I can say. I'm not saying that it cannot be forged because it's very simple to just, but we had also yeah. said that it will not have any kind of security features or anything. You can print out yeah. as, many of the, as you like. But, but for, for the, the thought that you had, how it's going to be used, uh, every place where I present my number, be on a card or not, they need to have equipment. Whereas um, when I go to the hotel, they say, show you a card. They're not checking anything. They're just, uh, right? No, 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 that's not, that unfortunately is not correct. 
Okay. Because you don't need any equipment to check the Aadhaar card's veracity. You just need a mobile phone. Mobile phone. So you call. Yeah. You, and, and that's all and, you have, and you can actually you can verify it. You don't even you can you can you know your your mobile is also linked to Aadhaar. You will get an OTP on that particular mobile number. Then it will be verified. So so let me let, so I go to the hotel and I say I'm Bhagwan Chaudhary, and they say what's your Aadhaar number? I give them the Aadhaar number. How do they know that I'm Bhagwan Chaudhary? Yeah, they and can, not they the... can just they can just plug in that Aadhaar number and they can immediately you know get uh, Bhagwan Chaudhary and Aadhaar number and they will get a yes and no response from the uh, UID authority. That That's a problem because next time I'm going to the hotel, I'm not going to say I'm Bhagwan Chaudhary. I'm going to say I am Ram Sevak Sharma. And I'm going to give you your Aadhaar card, which you actually gave to the whole world. Huh, and so then, how would they know that I'm not Ram no, Sevak? No, no. Then, then, you know, you give the Aadhaar card. And if you gave the Aadhaar card and if they checked with that, your photo will also come. So they will say, this is not the same person. Oh, so you're that saying is to, that is what is on the electronic KYC. You know, yeah. this is the, we, we have another, we have a facility. There are two facilities. One is the facility to authenticate that you are who you claim to be. Another is a facility to deliver your digital ID, uh, digital uh, Aadhaar on the device which you are calling. So therefore, those, those people will get the digital Aadhaar and immediately all your, and it's a digitally signed document. So it's as pakka document as any other document can be. So essentially, this is the, but, but let me say this, Aadhaar's use case was not predicated upon, you know, use cases of going to a hotel and giving this or going to some building and giving yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, right. it was it was envisaged as a service delivery mechanism. Right. So basically, you go to a ration card and a ration shop and say, "I want to have this service." There, the service delivery boy will figure out as to whether you are one of the beneficiaries or not. So you will present your identity, you will get verified, and thereafter they will look at their record saying that yes, this is the right person who is entitled for a for rice or for wheat. So, no, no, so that, uh, help me a little bit, that I don't understand. Without the uh, picture, there will be a problem, right? No, without the picture, there will be a problem, but they will have the document, and then the picture comes in the electronic KYC, that's what I precisely said. Electronic saying. KYC, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. no, I, I and, and, so, yeah. and then, yeah. you know, when they give the, give the thumb impression, and obviously, I have some impression. I got it. So yeah. that's what I meant by equipment. Yeah. So let's jump ahead from 2010 to 2020. In fact, you have been writing that we have barely scratched the surface, uh, the surface of the things we can do with Aadhaar. Right. So tell us by 2030, when I invite you again, and you may have little less hair by that time. Provided um, I'm alive by that time. <laughs> well, you'll be alive, I'm pretty sure. What do you think the world would look, what do you think India would look like? What would we be using Aadhaar for and where do you see this going? Now, uh, uh, I, I, I will, uh, you know, if you allow me, I'll ask a small counter question. That is small counter question is, any, you know, any, first let me give the answer and then the question. Any place where you need to prove that you are you, mm -hmm. any place, mm -hmm. any situation, yeah, and and in a non-reputable manner, you will, Aadhaar will be useful to you. Will be useful. Okay. Right. Now let's see how many situations are there where you need to prove that you need to do that. Okay. So. In the public sector, obviously, you need to prove uh, to withdraw money from the bank, for example, right? For for getting yeah, ration, yeah. for example, for getting a mobile SIM, for example, that's a private sector application. But nevertheless, the government who prescribes as to how the mobile SIM should be given. So basically, you save, you you open a bank account nowadays. People are you know announcing that eight one one. You open a bank account sitting at home because what happens? You authenticate yourself and give them the electronic KYC, which is a basically a digital document of your identity. You fill a customer acquisition form and digitally sign it. So basically you give them digital, you know, proof that you have actually filled that form. And that is precisely what you need. You don't need anything yeah. else. So yeah. therefore, there are many services which can be delivered with the use of Aadhaar yeah. in, a, in a seamless, presenceless manner. So that's one part. So, 
So just to give you an idea of the scale, we are having about 1 billion authentications per month. Per month. Per month. Yeah. Imagine we had, you know, 1 billion is approximately the number of Aadhaar holders who are alive and 1.2 billion maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are having the, everybody in that sense, in sense of number is authenticating at least once. Once a yeah, month, yeah. So 12 billion. We are having 700 million authentications for drawing money. You know, in this pandemic, there is a scheme called Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. Yeah, yes. It actually sends 500 rupees to each recipient every month. That's right. So people yeah. are drawing Aadhaar Pay, which is basically authenticating using their Aadhaar without having a bank account, by the way. So that's what is being delivered. So in the government space, and actually this is where the genesis of Aadhaar became. I mean, need for Aadhaar was felt because we realized, government realized that there were too many duplicates and fakes. So basically, the, either the guys were taking advantage six times. You know, he was taking, he was having six ration cards. There was one lady in Faridabad who had 932 PAN cards. 932, imagine, I mean, how, what madness. So basically, they were trying to, you know, save all the income tax. They were saying, yeah. I mean, 32. So essentially, this, this duplicate business was going on. Similarly, persons who don't exist, they got a card made in their name, somebody, you know, somebody else's name, uh, and then they were actually getting the benefits. So this yeah. is the problem. Aadhaar so, solved that problem by A, everybody has an identity. Everybody has a bank account now using that identity. And then everybody is able to access those benefits using, you know, his own biometrics so that benefits don't go to anybody else. There's no proxy. If yeah. you want to withdraw money, nobody else can withdraw money from my account. So that's one part of the government. So yeah. government has largely started using this there are many areas still where it is not being used, but largely the government space has been covered. So, in fact, I think um, when COVID hit, uh, I wrote an op-ed saying the system that we have been building for the last 10 years, yeah. finally, everybody will be able to see that we are able to use it. Right. Do you think, is your assessment that these transfers that took place, of direct money transfers, uh, during COVID and other thing, uh, in fact, vindicated uh, the the use of Aadhaar. Yes, it did. In fact, the the then um, you know the finance minister, honourable Mr. Jaitley, he gave a statement in Parliament that in one single year, Aadhaar saved as much as ninety thousand crore rupees. Now, the total cost of Aadhaar is just nine thousand crore rupees, even till date. So, it has the return on investment is thousand percent. Now, let me also tell you this part that India gives a subsidy of the order of 6 lakh crores every for every year, 6 yeah. lakh crores. You know, you have 1.25 lakh crores of your uh, food safety uh, scheme and you have old age pensions, you have widow pensions, you have unemployment pensions and you have the Narega uh, money. So th the total comes to 6 lakh crores and maybe the states are doing it and therefore the numbers are much more larger. And even with a 10% leakage, which takes, takes place, and yeah. that's an understatement. It's, it's a huge money. So that's one part. But the, I think the original question, uh, which which was there, is that in private sector also, yes, require a huge amount of, there are number of occasions, because any private system, which becomes a little institutionalized, in the sense that if I go to a, go to my land, uh, you know, landlord, he knows me that I'm R.S. Sharma, right? But wherever you have an institution, a small institution, some shop, some large shop, etc., where they need to figure out as to who you are, here's an opportunity. So I remember one case, uh, which is basically, you know, the case where Hero Honda, the the Hero people, Mr. Munjal and his company, yeah. they actually submitted a proposal because we were we were actually asking for people how do they want to use Aadhaar. So they submitted a very interesting proposal. They submitted a proposal of cycle renting, right? Bicycle. Now, cycle renting, if you do this, in today's, country, in today's our country, then you know one will have to have cycle one fellow at each station. At each place, you will have to have one guy who is writing who has taken and who has not taken, and many of the guys will just end up the cycle in their homes. Now, if you have a mechanism whereby the whole thing operates on your digital identity, Proving either by way of OTP, the one-time password, 
then you know as soon as you put your aadhar number the application gives you one time pa password and that password is plugged and the system verifies that you are so and so the cycle lock opens and then you take the cycle and yeah. you go to another part of the city you do the same thing and you just deposit the cycle so yeah okay without any i mean just giving a very simple example of of use case of aadhar so there are thousands such example and what has happened is the supreme court in its decision while it upheld that aadhar does not violate privacy aadhar does not create a surveillance state aadhar does not profile individuals aadhar is absolutely safe having said that they also limited the use of aadhar only to the sarkari schemes and why did they do that i i didn't understand that part at all i will i i am not competent enough to really because you know, that put the uh, the bar back like for everything you have to go to supreme court to get this thing i mean that made no sense to me at all probably the issue there was that it was issued as a, the act was issued as a finance bill so once once it was a part of the finance bill then obviously the honorable judges looked at it that this is actually something which is made to to kind of save the money or act act with the you know purpose of saving the money to the government so my question is that look if if something which is safe a road which is safe it can't be safe only for the private uh, public sector vehicles it should be safe even for the private one and it's a public good you you know it very well that a public good is a good which is which does not reduce uh, you know nothing gets spent if you use it more and more so basically you should use it more and more and if you use it more and more it, it has the capability to do actually 1 billion authentications per hour you can we can do that this is sorry 1 billion authentication per day or something like that i'm, I'm forgetting the figure so yeah once you can do per day you can also do per hour i'm sure so technologically it's possible but but just takes two that, less than two seconds to do a authentication so let me let me get to an issue which i think is fundamental there is this tension between information and authentication right. if we had stuck to the idea that aadhar is only about authentication we would be fine but i think what has happened is at some point we got over zeros and we said okay this can also be used as an address proof this can also be used for this this can also be and now we are talking about this whole issue of privacy and information did it have to be that way could could this not could these two things not have been completely separate where you had insisted that we are not collecting any information so there is no question of losing that information right but the evolution of it happened is that many agencies not just uidai but others are collecting information and now we have to deal with all these issues which i think is a good thing and you have written about it that the privacy bill that's going to uh, come will clarify some of it could you say something about that sure absolutely one is that you know uh, a general comment that uh, aadhar is a very uh, aadhar is somehow unfortunately not understood the architecture and the principles have not been understood uh, you know fully let me put it this way because aadhar is an artifact of a digital world and what we are dealing here typically some of our you know predilections and some of our you know sort of what is called views of the physical world so so that's the the problem in fact from day one we are saying aadhar does only two things and we continue to say that and even the aadhar act says that now one is we generate identity you yeah. need identity for each individual so once you you know sort of enroll for aadhar as per the given protocol then you know aadhar generates identity number a random number 12 digit number and gives it back to you so that's one number generated second is aadhar also provides an authentication service digital authentication service sorry yes things. and and nothing else and we also said that aadhar will not collect aadhar will collect minimal information so i'll tell you one interesting interesting you know episode in that but why my question is why collect any information at all why did they say that we that's a, that's a, we collect that's a great, that's a yeah. great question in fact and what happened was that there was a committee under mr wittel you know yeah. mr n wittel who was a cvc and who was secretary of it a very celebrated uh, person 
so essentially that committee was and it was going to decide as to what attributes or what information you should collect about a person so the question came that what are we you know what, what is the purpose of collecting this information the purpose of collecting this information is to establish identity of a person right now what are the essential ingredients and attributes of an identity now we came name is essential ingredient of that identity isn't it okay name is you know, because you know otherwise you can't say that these are the these are the uh, you know name is a private and, and secret stuff gender is hopefully right similar i would say no to both but let's go ahead with fine, that fine fine but you know yeah. what we are saying in this current practical my world, body the per, i the, the right. person i present myself to be That's is right. your your body yeah. your body uh, has a name because i am going to be the one taking out the cash so yeah your body has a name your body has a gender your body why, why do they need to know why do you need to know that uh, right. yeah okay yeah okay that that can be one of the you know discussion points but <laughs> it has a it has a broadly a date of birth why why i'm saying that is that the, you know these things also are to, to be verified you know other end so the guy who is delivering service now if if say this is this is x now x has no gender x has no age then you know it will be very difficult for that guy to say that you are professor choudhury right so essentially let me let me go to the spirit yeah. of the story the spirit of the story was that we should collect minimal information okay got it yeah. necessary and sufficient necessary and also sufficient to establish one's identity so for example one issue came people typically in all these forms you know you have permanent address and current address right yeah i know so I what is what is permanent address so we dropped that completely but so, address you did huh it's used as a proof of address though right no, no, is it no, no. this is a communication address you know I and see. ultimately aadhar was going to be communicated to people through a letter right that's what we had envisaged and how do you communicate uh, without knowing the address so address was necessary for communicating purpose you can change the address and last was basically one issue came that should we not have the place of birth and wow. that's what i'm saying so basically you will find that in many of the forms you have place of birth also i see okay. said no place of birth is not required because that is not an essential attribute of identity and it will also help people in profiling so essentially we collected just these four informations you may still you know kind of reduce it but essentially the idea was we will begin with we will collect nothing and then we will pick up what is essential and we picked up only four attributes which is the name the gender the age and the communication address and obviously we we collected we we had the uh, iris and the the fingerprint because without that we could not ensure uniqueness you know uniqueness the only way we could assure a uniqueness in this population of 1.2 billion is to have some attributes which are unique to an individual unfortunately even the fingerprints only given 95% accuracy so we said that if 95% means 6 crore people 60 million people out of 1.2 billion will be with double identities so that is okay. why we use the other part so the whole so i have to i have to i have to interrupt you not because this is not very interesting oh, yeah. i think you and i i need to spend 5 hours you but uh, to be fair to people who are there posting questions i want to be able to read out some of those questions but i think you and i need to have more so here's a question from anil mandalapu he says nowadays how secure uh, how secure is to share my aadhar number and mobile number at places like hotel and airport because both are linked to my bank account and it is pretty clear to hack anyone's bank account aadhar and the linked 10 digit mo mobile number is more than enough so he's worried that uh, everybody asks you anil need not be worried why i mean let me not talk about mobile of course i could talk about that also but to keep it short aadhar number is a random number associated with the person right so it is as if you have mr so and so you are mrs so and so you are just attributing you are just attaching a 12 digit random number with that person it is as as you know it it doesn't add or it doesn't reduce anything from that person so let me tell you by knowing somebody's aadhar number 
imagine and i'll ask anil a counter question can you tell me one single example as to how you could be harmed just tell me one single example because these are all hyperbolic fears which are generated and that is why i actually disclosed my own aadhar number and i said do what you can and no, no. nothing could be done nothing happened believe me what they did was they essentially published my display picture on whatsapp now that whatsapp number was not taken by my aadhar because my aadhar cannot provide them what my my phone number my phone number actually is listed on many of the websites and therefore he picked up something so you are saying you are saying dr sharma that by knowing aadhar number somebody should not be able to hack your bank account not at all no how how i mean i'm just asking it cannot happen because aadhar number will not be your username aadhar number will not be your password in a bank account right <laughs> so you you can uh, anyway i will invite anil to share with me any use case scenario where Aadhaar and how does he do that Aadhaar. how can he share it with you is, is your can he send you an email or what my email is there rs sharma3 at gmail.com that's okay so rs sharma3 at gmail.com and dr sharma here's a question from ajay pandey which is he says it's a little bit off track but his question is um as we start to um, uh, connect with other ids other national ids other countries such as uri id and things like that how is this going to play out because it's supposed to be a national id but now when i travel um do you have given it any thoughts about that no actually what is happening is it is being connected to some other not ids but some other uh, you know artifacts like pan card now obviously pan card also need to be unique a person should have only one pan card in his or her name right so the only way you can achieve that is to link the pan card with aadhar number because then those pan cards which have multiple pan cards attached to one aadhar number can be cancelled secondly one a pan card which is not attached to an aadhar and the person has got an aadhar then obviously that pan card is also uh, fake so these are the ways we are using to clean up the other domains data i have not really thought about as to how this could be you know every but every country's passport numbering system is different so i'm not sure as to how you connect the the identity of various other countries with this and and what is the use case scenario for that i'm not really very sure so there is a couple of other questions and i'm just going to rephrase them because uh, we have very little time so you were also of course uh, uh, you just stepped down from the the, the, the telecom authority so what uh, mr uh, uh, anil was saying was this connection between a mobile number and aadhar that seems a little uh, worrisome uh, because your mobile number also everybody asks you your mobile number and say why do you want to know this you know uh, so i think i think anil is absolutely right but he is right not in the in the in the worrisome part basically okay. let me put it this way if i have your mobile number there's no way i can reach your aadhar number right that's number one please please consider this statement this is a very important statement by knowing your mobile number i don't know your aadhar number though of course your aadhar number is also as useless as far as you know anything further is concerned that's number one number two Mobile somebody mobile. else somebody else i produce my aadhar and they also ask for my mobile number am i vulnerable giving these two pieces of information to other people no no that's what i'm saying so one is the one is the individually aadhar number individually yeah. mobile number nothing happens now let's get the connection oh, the yeah. connection is actually quite interesting the connection is because your mobile number is linked to your aadhar number in the aadhar yeah. database yeah if you do a transaction right like you do a banking transaction immediately the bank informs you that a particular money has been withdrawn from your account right mm. that's how yeah, that's, that's a good thing is. so essentially what happens it's a good thing because any transaction of authentication you do immediately uid ai informs you on your mobile that you have tried doing an authentication and your authentication was successful or not successful at this point in time so actually it is a security mechanism for informing because we have kept this provision in aadhar 
that anybody who does an authentication, a he should he or she should do authentication of his own volition. That's that's voluntary authentication. Nobody should be able to you know you are you are doing it for getting something or you are doing it for some purpose. Number one, and number two, we should inform him. So consent and information. These are two important aspects of privacy. So we are using mobile number as a consent mechanism, as a mechanism to con convey and inform. So therefore, linking of mobile and Aadhaar is actually extremely beneficial if you are doing authentication. If you are not doing authentication, it has no side effects. It has no negative effects. That's what I'm saying. So a couple more questions. Um, there's a question about is Aadhaar compliant to GDPR regulations? But let me ask a more general question, which is um, the link of Aadhaar to this whole issue of data and privacy, which is uh, becoming more and more important. Could you tell us something about that? No, uh, the, the question is the Aadhaar Act, if you read, Aadhaar Act provides a whole lot of you know safety mechanisms with, re with regard to the privacy mechanism. So, there is no, uh, you know, sort of. Uh, uh, it, it it is voluntary. It is it is used for government schemes. It can be used for private schemes also, provided there is a law enabling it. So there are a lot of restrictions on the on the uses of of uh, Aadhaar. So so Poonam had the specific thing that you know uh, with GDPR regulations, gender and date of birth is cannot be disclosed, but. Okay, you Aadhaar doesn't disclose, disclose anything no, no, either. You right? don't disclose. Aadhaar will not. You don't produce Aadhaar. Even if you have Aadhaar, don't produce Aadhaar. If something else can work, do as that. If there is yeah. a document which does not disclose any one of these attributes, please use that document. You know, it's not necessary that you have to use Aadhaar. You are using Aadhaar for getting benefits from the Consolidated Fund of India, which yeah. means if you are benefiting from a scheme, you have to make. Sometimes you have to use Aadhaar only or link Aadhaar. For example, you are filing an income tax. You please use Aadhaar, and nowadays, of course, you have, if you have if you have Aadhaar, you can get a PAN card in five minutes. There is no need for a, applying for a separate PAN card. So there are these are facilities. So please understand, Aadhaar is not something compulsory unless you are using the money from the consolidated fund. And secondly, Aadhaar is like an express highway. You know, you if you want to use, you use your ration card. If you want to use, use your passport. So be it. I mean, if, if that's okay, please use that. Nobody is saying that you must use Aadhaar only. With regard to the GDPR, GDPR is not related to identity documents as such. I don't, uh, uh, I'm not aware of a document of any country. You know, for example, Britain has got the national identity number, NIN. The, the Sweden has got their own, every country has its own, uh, you know, sort of national identity cards or national identity numbers. Now, okay. here in Sweden, for example, you have not only this, the number itself incorporates your date of birth, by the way. The number is constructed of a string which has your date of birth too. So it's actually this whole issue of privacy and disclosure being applied to Aadhaar. It's a little bit misconstrued and I will say sometimes I think the we have not been able to explain, put it this way. We have not been able to explain properly and it's not people's fault. And somehow there are people on the other side who have made it a big issue of this. And that is why I have been saying and I've been writing about it also that India has created such a wonderful digital identity. Recent issue of Economist, you must have seen, it basically says that it is ironical that Britain yeah. and USA don't have a digital identity and India, right. yeah. a large country has got the digital identity. So actually, we should rather be proud of it. Unfortunately, what has happened is because of a lot of, and let me also tell you something very interesting. Many of these big tech behemoths, they do not want Aadhaar to come up. Why? Because they want to have their own identity. You know, today you can sign with your Facebook identity on any application, any digital application. Use your Facebook identity, use your Google identity. Yeah. Right? So they want to create their own identity system. This is the, the problem. So now I think it is, it is a time people, this has been deliberated, it has been you know, decided by the Honorable Supreme Court, none other, and that's a law. There is a very a law which is there, and I think my wish is that you know this should be used as a public utility, as a public good. It must be used in as many domains as possible, and it is. It will clean up many of the things. It will facilitate many things. It will provide 
the the you know digital india mechanism to deliver services so i think that's a, that's the way it should happen yeah so we are almost out of time uh, i want to just uh, have a couple of last minute thoughts and questions one is um as you probably know that uh, i mentioned to you that we at isb have this thing called digital identity research initiative and part our job is to really educate everyone to see what aadhaar can do and what digital identity can or cannot do and where the limitations are so we are doing research uh, and i would love you love to have you be involved with uh, with the initiative and my my related question with which i'm going to end this um you just stepped down you wrote a book you're only 65 years old what is next on your agenda no on the first proposal of yours i accept it wholeheartedly i'll be very happy to associate with uh, to be associated with your uh, digital identity research project and and i'll be able to provide whatever little experience i have I had this uh, in this on to the my next program uh, professor choudhury you know uh, government has has you know there, there are some uh, advantages and some disadvantages in the government systems one advantage is that you don't plan at all you know you are just shunted out from one place to another place <laughs> <laughs> i was transferred nine times in seven years in jharkhand for example 2002 2009 so it it happens you know this is a normal uh, stuff so but then in that process you are like a koluka bell you know but you are just going wherever the bosses are telling you to go so you keep on doing your job so this is the first time in 42 and a half years of my life that i am you know asked uh, i am confronted with the question what next so so that that's a question which i am still grappling with it has just been a week of my retirement i'll whenever i come up with the answer i'll certainly share with you professor chaudhary <laughs> okay on that note i want to thank you on behalf of isb and delhi and in fact i would um take the liberty of thanking you for the service you have provided to the country for all your life so it is my honor to have spoken to you on this seminar and i look forward to engaging with you with engaging with you even more and thank you everybody for listening uh sorry if i didn't get to your question but um uh, hopefully some of the questions uh, i was able to get to so thanks dr sharma and uh, bye everyone for the uh, and wait for the next tgif thank you very much take care bye